Hiya. It's been a minute. Um, I've taken a break from social media. Um, and oddly enough, reading the book, The Subtle Art of Not Giving Up, uh, actually confirms that social media contributes to depression. Um, if you've been paying attention this year, it hasn't been great. Um, I have been struggling and there are reasons that I've been working on with myself um, and my psychologist. We've been working on those things. And um, I thought, since I'm coming up on the worst time of year for me, I call it the big empty, because Thanksgiving, my birthday, Christmas, New Year's, those are rough on me for no particular reason, except I suppose that so many people seem so happy and I don't feel that. I just feel like I don't have that, you know, like it, it makes, it makes you sad. And, and part of the book I'm reading, it, it talks about that, that, you know, there's suffering, whether you're rich or whether you're poor, there's suffering, there's pain. It, it doesn't matter. If you're always looking for like, oh, if I have that, I'll be happy. If I have that, I'll be happy. And, and people think, oh, you know, come, come sit with me. And they ask you when you're sitting with them, are you happy? I'm, I'm happy right now. Happiness, especially with depression, is not sustained. You know, you, you have to live in the moments of happiness. But one thing is not going to make you happy. One thing is not going to be what you think it is. And that's something I've been having to work out with myself is, you know, that if I got the things I wish for, they're not going to make me happy because I have had so many great things in my life and found myself unhappy. I felt like there was more and I was missing it. And that's not really true. But um, the other day, I, I was told something and, and I got to thinking, you know, that's probably one of the worst things to say to someone with depression. Um, and it's been sticking with me. You know, what does a person with depression need? Um, you know, I always find it kind of fascinating with all the information that's out there that people will hear diagnoses of what people have, anxiety disorder, or, or even diabetes, um, hypothyroidism, you know, just like all these various things that a person can be diagnosed with. And so many people don't look up what it is. They don't look up how to help that person, you know, how to aid them, you know, or what, you know, especially with, with like a partner, you know, that they're not looking up, how do I help somebody with multiple sclerosis? You know, how can I be of aid to them? Because a lot of people who need help are not going to ask for it. And some of us 
are not exactly sure what we need. Like, for me, I mean, granted, if if I all of a sudden got a thousand dollars, I'd be pretty happy in the ten minutes it it took me to spend it, <laughs> and in the waiting for the items to come, I'd be like, "Ooh, it's coming, it's coming," you know, and I'd be so excited. But then that would be gone. Once I got the things, gone. Um, so, so yeah, of course, you know, like money landing in my lap is obviously going to make me happy to a degree, but the depression's still there. And, you know, nothing really, you know, you can take your meds, you can go to therapy, all this stuff, but something that I have heard on occasion is, well, you were struggling and I didn't know how to help you. So I just gave you your space or I just backed away and thought that you would come, you know, whenever, whenever you're done. And the thing with depression, or at least in, in my case, I can't say it's with every case, is the the feeling of not being understood, the feeling of not being heard, the feeling of, ugh, I'm making a mountain out of a molehill, nobody wants to hear my shit, nobody cares. There's a lot of negativity with depression. And when people decide that, oh, they're pushing me away, and I, I know they're struggling, I know they don't mean it, but I'm going to give them space. And perhaps there are people with depression who do need space. You know, depending on if, you know, what's going on with their life, what do they need? You know, do they need help with something that stresses them out? Or do they need somebody to listen and not judge? Do they need somebody to go, wow, that's deep. I'm, I'm sorry you feel that way. Um, at the end of the day, though, if everybody, somebody with depression pushes away, goes away, gives them space then all that person with depression has is too much time to think. So what do we do? We sleep. We make bad decisions. We try to, you know, you either sleep or you try to make things interesting. Try, 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 you know, try to have purpose. And, you know, I've, I've gotten that from friends in the past that, well, you know, I didn't know how to help you, so I decided to just leave you be. And I don't think, you know, it's, it's, it's really sad because I think that if you, you look up depression, you'll see that we don't need the people we push away to budge. We need them to step in and be like, hey, let's do something. Let's hang out. Let's talk on the phone. Let's watch a movie together. Let's do something. And, you know, and the thing is, is you kind of have to look those things up. If you're not listening to me tell you, like, Hey, sometimes what it seems like we need isn't what we need. And if you asked me, do you want me to just leave you alone? I'm going to say, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not fit for consumption. I suck. I'm horrible. You know, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to say, yeah, just I'm nothing. <laughs> 